is trusting him that changes them. Somebody said to change. Somebody say there's change coming in my life. Change coming in my life. And all the bad things is going to change for the good. Because it's God that brings the increase in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord praise. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6 and verse 37. The Bible says, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. I want you to hear that. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. That's simple, point. You shall. Did you hear all the shalls in there? That means it didn't maybe. It, it means you shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you meet, with all it shall be measured to you.
turn around and give back to you more than you give them. Praise the Lord. What I'm trying to tell you, church, when we change and God causes a change to come in our life, we change people around us and people know that there's something different in our lives because change is coming in our lives. And then we begin to lead people. We're able to lead people because change came into our lives. Give the Lord praise. The Bible says in verse 39, in Luke chapter 6, verse 39, the Bible says, He spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? They shall both fall into the ditch. Oh, hallelujah. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Hallelujah, church. How do we get to that place? How do we get to that place, Sister Wiggins? How do we get to the place of being perfect? How do we get to the place of being perfect in the Lord? Well, it's just what I told you. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be, oh, be forgiven. Praise the Lord. He said, I give you something not to hold for yourself. Saul. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 9. 
9. The Bible says in Acts chapter 9, in verse 1, it says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord, and went to the high priest and desired, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he find any of this way, whether they be man or woman, that he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Do you know, hallelujah, do you know that Saul knew God, but he didn't know Jesus. He knew the, he knew the law of God, but he didn't know the grace of God. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I'm saying? He knew the law giver, but he didn't know the grace giver. Do you hear me, church? That's what's wrong with a lot of churches today. A lot of churches, they get up and they tell you how you need to dress. They tell you how you need to do this and do that. And they want to preach law, law, law. And I'm going to tell you something. The church is good to be modest. The Bible says for us all to be modest. The Bible tells us and teaches us to be modest. But I'm going to tell you something. God didn't call us to be lawgivers. He's already given the law. He called us preachers to stand up and give praise. He called you to be a grace giver. I don't know about you, church, but I'm going to be just like Moses. And I'm going to preach grace until the day I die. Hallelujah. I'm going to stand up. And I'm going to show people, hallelujah, Brother Johnny, that I had an encounter with God. And I want to give this change and this encounter that God can you. If God can change this old drunkard, He can change you. There was a time that the devil tried to get a hold of me. And the devil tried to lead me down the wrong road. There was a time I was going down the wrong road. But the Holy Ghost came to me one night. When I was dead and out. And everybody went home. And nobody was there to party with me no more. And I was about to die and lose my breath. Oh, but the Holy Ghost came to me. Which is God in me. The Holy Spirit around me. He came to me. And he gave me another chance. He came to me. And he changed me. I didn't drink no more. I didn't cuss no more. I didn't want to fight no more. I just wanted to love. I wanted to give people what I had been given. I've been up on a mountain church. And I've come down with my Joshua. I've come down with my Joshua. And I'm trying to take you today, church. If you come off your mountain and quit giving the law and give praise, God will save some people. They shine round about him a 
underlined light from heaven. And then somebody underlined, he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? That means he didn't know the grace giver. He only knew the law. Hallelujah. And don't you think that Saul didn't know the law? He knew the law. Amen. He knew it by the letter. He knew how to execute it. He knew how to bring it out. He went to their, uh, he, was a, he was a theologian in their law. He, he went to their schools to learn their law. He, he went to some of the greatest schooling. He was a great master at the law. But there was one thing he was lacking. He was lacking the grace giver. Hallelujah, church. And the only way you can, you can walk in God's law, you can come to church, and you can preach God's law, and you can look like you're the righteous man,
when you have an encounter with God, you will love people. You will give instead of judging. You won't get the You say, you know, I, I know brother so and so has got a problem, but look at all the good areas in God. Look at the good in this man. If I could just introduce him to the light where he could see Jesus and hear his voice, I can cause change to come into his life. See, the man that traveled with Saul, the Bible says they stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul rose from the earth, and when, he, when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither did he eat or drink. Wow! Now when he left Jerusalem, he had made up in his mind that he was going to be the lawgiver. He made up in his mind that he was going to preach all, and if anybody was preaching anything else, he was going to bind them head and foot, whether they were men or women, Somebody else is leading you around. 
with and have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he may receive sight. See, if you're in your Damascus, don't fear. God just wants to show you a vision. God is just wanting to give you vision. Isn't it amazing that before God healed his natural eye, that he healed his spiritual eye? Isn't it amazing once he met the grace giver, the one that changes our lives, the one that causes us to walk and talk different than we ever did before? Isn't it amazing that God opened up his spiritual eyes, brother, sister Brady, and before he did his natural? He was finally, he met the God. spiritual body but in his physical body God changed him and 
he became a great apostle of the Lord. And do you know, a lot of people say that Paul, or Saul, changed his name to Paul. But see, his Hebrew name was Paul. His Roman name was Saul. When he was a Roman, and he was a Roman citizen, he went by Saul. But when he had his encounter with the Hebrew God, he decided to go by the name of Paul, the Hebrew name. Wow. So, so he, didn't, he didn't just change his name. His name was already Paul in the Hebrew. Hallelujah. It was already, it was already Paul. He just chose to go by his Hebrew. Hallelujah. You know what he done? He turned his back on him, Romans. <laughs> See, 
If you're a man or a woman of grace, you can understand what he says. He says, the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Shall be as his master. That means today, church, if you need God to come into your life and change you, if you need to see Him, hear Him, and, and know that He's with you, you can come to this altar today and give your heart to the Lord, or you can come to this altar and pray, and when you walk out of this place, the Bible says you will be as I am. And I can prove that. The Bible says, <clears throat> the Bible says, that when he came back from, the, from his resurrection, the Bible says he blew on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And he said, I have given you authority. He said, I have given you authority, is what he said. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. I've given you the authority. As, as I have been sent, even so send I you. He said, but My Father sent me now. I have the power to send you. And he said, and the same glory that I have will be on you. He said, if you'll learn who I am, I am the grace giver. And walk and hear my word. He says, today when you walk out of this church, you're going to be perfect in me. As I am. As I am. Give the Lord praise. Would you? In this name you get on the Lord. I know I got at least another hour worth of sermon here. I don't know. I'll probably pick up on it next week. But I'm here to tell you true change comes in your life when Jesus, when you meet Jesus, when you see Him and hear Him. It's not just good. You, a lot of people say, well, how do you see Jesus? Well, you can see Him. Oh my God, I can see the anointing when it falls on me. I can see Jesus in the spirit realm. See, he didn't really see Jesus in the he seen him in the natural and the supernatural. He seen him in the supernatural. See, before we can really be changed, we need to understand change means transcending. God wants to transcend us. He wants to. He wants to send us to level, to glory, to glory. What does everything that moves changes? Everything in the earth changes. You have four seasons. You have uh, spring, summer, fall, winter. It's continuously transcending. It's, it's, it's continuously going from time to time. Now, you can take that body of yours and you can sit down for one year in a recliner and not move. You will lose the use of your legs. You will lose your strength. You will lose the use of your legs. You will use, lose the use of your arms. And all this time to say, you know what, you should be getting up. And you, you keep sitting there. You, you know, your brain keeps working and keeps transcending, but your body is left behind because you're not using it. See, that's what the, the body of Christ has got to get up and we got to move. we got to be on the move. It ain't time. It ain't time to just sit down and, and give up. It, we got to be on the move, Brother Thompson. we got to know that we're moving. Experience him. 